We all have probably dreamt of an AI that can literally do anything in one request, like writing codes for us, translating for us, designing for us, or even making memes for us. And actually, as of last year, these useful applications are already slowly becoming a reality. These are all products from language models called GPT-3, which is short for Generative Pre-trained Transformer 3. It was published by OpenAI along with a paper called Language Models Are Few Shot Learners. And the main takeaway is that it is trained with a lot of data, like literally the whole internet, and with a lot of parameters, a historical large number of it in the AI model. The few shot in the title basically means when evaluating the AI, you provide a few demonstrations of what you want it to do first. This is to basically fine tune it to your task, then it'll learn and imitate the topic of your demonstrations for things you ask it to do. This is because in a nutshell, GPT-3 is just an auto text completion on steroids. Without you demonstrating how it should exactly run, it will just be spitting out endless loops of text. So every application that you saw has already been fine-tuned to do exactly what it was shown. But the flexibility and precision is mind-blowingly on point, so I'll give it that. The codes and the pre-trained models weren't released initially, but I think they are not planning to release it in the future either. However, they do have an API for GPT-3 models on their official website where you can sign up for. And this is also the reason why I was late to the party as I was waiting to get my hands onto their beta access so I could test out what GPT-3 could really do. So basically for every free personal beta access, we get 300k tokens which is like one word per token to use running through the model. This includes your input and generated output while each playground for the text evaluation and generation is capped to 2056 tokens. So it is actually a pretty kind amount for people that just want to play with it. And after my 3 hours session of playing with it, it only took around 50 k tokens and that's it. To start off, we can basically head to their playground and reproduce all the examples from their papers and receive even more information by adjusting various parameters for model evaluation at the side. If we don't know how to utilize the AI, we can just head to the examples section where it provides examples of how to fine tune GPT-3 and obtain results acting like those functions in the playground. This is basically the few shot learning slash fine tuning steps I mentioned previously so the AI can do what you have demonstrated it to do. There are notably three examples they gave that caught my attention. Summarize for a second grader, movie to emoji, and Marv the sarcastic chatbot. The summarize for a second grader function is basically structured in a narrative way and designed to look like a story. This is rather fascinating because it feels like the fine tuning process is to create a context instead of creating a function. So the consistency will be more difficult to maintain since no specific structure and operation is specified absolutely. So if the AI does not understand your instructions? then you are doomed. Movie to emoji is actually a surprise for me though. They may not actually be that accurate, but they can definitely find some information based on the movie title or even anime title in some cases to generate the right emojis. Since movies are pretty easy to match, I tested on some animes to see how cultured GPT-3 is. And it turns out that it can list out animes really easily while not going off to standard movies. And it even knew some of the plots to pair with the right emojis, which I did not expect. Marv the sarcastic chatbot is an exciting idea, but the execution is really just like an E for effort in the title. It was toned down so much that it wasn't really sarcasm anymore, but instead a chatbot that is just reluctant to answer your questions. So to be more accurate, I got clickbaited first, then you guys got clickbaited onto my video. So ultimately is OpenAI's fault for clickbaiting of us. But honestly, this is understandable because it's to prevent the potential abuse like people who might get GPT-3 and say dumb or offensive stuff. Like they even have a dedicated user agreement section for social media usage. Like I cannot discreetly show unsafe generations and they are basically not responsible for what I bait the AI to say. So every time the AI generates something potentially offensive in the playground, you will be greeted either with an orange highlight or a red highlight to indicate it is actually a little problem but keep in mind that all these are learned from the internet, so really, blame the growth environment, not the kid. So I forcefully changed the prompt myself after testing the reluctant bot, but still got roughly the same results. What is cool though is that the AI really understands the content within the fine tuning, because it stopped answering my questions once my fine tuning mentioned that it will not answer the same question again, or changed the way that it answers my question. 
What I struggle the most is to get the AI to answer questions as sarcastic or funny as the examples in the provided fine tuning. I only ended up with a few semi successful ones while I was hoping for something along the lines of the T is for trying to ask better questions in the future, which would have been amazing. Anyways, aside from these three functions I decided to talk about today, the playground also offers a wide range of applications for you to use, as well as coming up with your own fine tuning method to design a function that you wanted to perform. You want a personal tutor that teaches you how to use PyTorch? Here, it will literally explain anything for you. You want a translator because Google Translate is not accurate enough? Here, it will literally be accurate if the AI is in the mood for some translations. Do you want a friend to recommend you an anime to watch? Well, this is definitely hell of a degenerate AI than what I expected. But here, so after some pretty deep conversations with my friend over here, I would say that its potential is basically limitless. And we also have come to an agreement that this open AI beta is hella cool. Since OpenAI's beta API is upgradable for business purposes, with today's sponsor 27 stars, you can make your cool fine-tuned GPT-3 function into any web page or app right now. 27 stars is a London-based development company that creates custom tailored web and mobile applications for businesses of all sizes. With your expertise, they can hook up the API with any services you currently have or planning to create easily. Other than that, they are capable of web developments while also offering an exclusive 10% discount for all my viewers who are utilizing their services. All you have to do is to include my name in the initial email to receive the discount. And by working with them, you are also indirectly supporting my channel too, which allows me to make more content in the future. Shout out to Connie, MD, and many other Patreons that support my work through Patreon. And if you want to play around in the beta playground, you can sign up here now. If you want to share your results, feel free to join my Discord and share with our amazing community. Follow my Twitter if you haven't and I'll see you all in the next one.